refueling, maintaining, and troubleshooting forklift cylinders. Propane-fueled forklifts offer numerous advantages over other types of industrial trucks, including greater safety through the use of a closed fuel system, fewer emissions, and healthier working conditions, and less wear and tear on carburetors and other engine components. Forklift Cylinder Construction Forklift cylinders are refueled by refilling from a dispensing tank on site or by exchanging an empty cylinder for a full one. Regardless of the method, before you refuel forklift cylinders, you should understand their construction and how they work. Properties of Forklift Cylinders Forklift cylinders are manufactured to DOT specifications and, like smaller cylinders, can be made from either aluminum or some type of alloy steel. They typically hold 33 pounds of propane, but other sizes are also available. Every DOT cylinder has a foot ring, a wide metal band that protects the bottom of the cylinder from corrosion or other damage and also functions as the cylinder's support stand or base. Forklift cylinders also have a protective collar, a wide metal band that is welded to the cylinder and partially surrounding the valves in the service end. The collar often incorporates a handle for lifting and moving the cylinder. Openings for valves and fittings are located in the service end of the cylinder. Many valves are made with non-metallic or soft parts such as nylon, rubber, and Teflon. These materials are also used in O-rings, packing seals, valve discs, and gaskets to ensure that valves provide a gas-tight seal. If any of these parts become worn out, Propane liquid or vapor can leak out of the valve and create a potentially hazardous situation, so valves should be examined at each filling or exchange of the cylinder. Forklift Cylinder Parts One of the many parts of a forklift cylinder is the pressure relief valve, which provides overpressure protection to the cylinder. It should be kept clean, unrestricted, and set to the 12 o'clock position and directed upward at a 45-degree angle when the cylinder is mounted horizontally. Relief valves on forklift cylinders must be replaced within 12 years of the cylinder's manufacture date and every 10 years thereafter. A rain cap or dust cap must also be in place. Filler valves have an internal check valve to limit fuel loss in the event of an accident. This valve should be covered with a plastic cap. The fixed maximum liquid level gauge is an integral part of the filling operation when filling cylinders by the volume method. DOT cylinders may have a fuel gauge using a magnetic liquid level float dial inside of the cylinder. The liquid hose is the part of the carburation system that is equipped with the female portion of the connector. The liquid service valve is equipped with the male portion of a forklift connector, which acts as an added check valve. Both the male and female halves are equipped with 100% shutoffs. When coupled together, they open and allow gas to flow. If the liquid service valve is turned on without being connected to the female portion, no gas can escape because the coupler has two seals, an O-ring and a flat washer. The O-ring prevents leakage from the shaft on the other coupling, while the flat washer bottoms out and seals when the coupler is fully connected. Both the washer and the O-ring should be replaced if they show signs of wear, abuse, or leakage. The service valve can be turned off for service or emergencies and is equipped with an internal excess flow check valve designed to close automatically if a line is severed. When the propane cylinder is in use, the valve must be open completely. Cylinder Markings Cylinder markings are required by DOT and include information such as the specification design code, cylinder tear weight, water capacity in pounds, and manufacturer name and test date. The information must be legible and clearly and permanently marked on the cylinder collar or body. The design code is specified by a number and one or more letters, and the service pressure is designated in pounds per square inch gauge. For example, 
DOT-4BA240 may be one marking found on a cylinder. In this example, the term 4BA indicates that the cylinder is a welded, Series 4 alloy steel, Series BA cylinder. The number 240 indicates that the service pressure is 240 pounds per square inch. The tear weight is the weight of the cylinder when empty and includes the weight of the cylinder valves. The tear weight is used when a cylinder is filled by weight and should always be checked before filling. Cylinders with the same water capacity can have different tear weights, so each cylinder should be treated individually. If you come across a cylinder with XXX over the DOT specification number or marked with condemned on the shoulder, head, or collar, set the cylinder aside and notify your supervisor. These cylinders must not be refilled or put back in service. Requalification All refillable cylinders, including forklift cylinders, must be requalified at regular intervals. Requalification is not normally handled at forklift customer locations and should only be performed by qualified individuals whose facility is registered with the DOT. The most recent requalification date is marked on the cylinder. A date without a letter indicates the next requalification must be within 12 years. The letter S following the date indicates the cylinder must be requalified within seven years of the marked date. The letter E following the date indicates that requalification is required again within five years of the marked date. Cylinders that are out of qualification must not be refilled. Instead, they should be marked and set aside in a designated safe area. Purging if air or moisture enters a propane cylinder, it can slow down the filling operation, create unusually high service pressures, create improper truck operation, or cause fading of the odorant in the cylinder. In order for equipment to operate safely, both new cylinders that have not been vacuum purged by the manufacturer and those that have been opened to the atmosphere must be purged of air or moisture before filling. If you come in contact with a cylinder that has been opened to the atmosphere, do not refill it or remount it on the forklift. Place it in an area for return to your propane supplier. Pre-fill inspection. Before a forklift cylinder can be filled, refilled, or exchanged, DOT regulations require a visual check to verify that it is fit for continued use. If any of the following problems are found during the inspection, the cylinder must not be filled and should be marked and set aside in a designated safe area. Problems that may prevent refilling a cylinder include cracks or leaks, bulging, serious denting or gouging, defective valves unless properly repaired or replaced, defective or leaking pressure relief device, unless properly repaired or replaced. Damage to the cylinder valve, valve protection, and cylinder foot rings. Evidence of physical abuse, fire or heat damage, or excessive rusting or corrosion. Out-of-date requalification. Steel cylinders subjected to fire must be requalified, reconditioned, or repaired by the original manufacturer or a DOT-authorized repair facility. However, Aluminum cylinders damaged by fire must be permanently removed from service. During your visual inspection, also check all valves, springs, valve seats and gaskets. If they are worn or show any signs of aging, they need to be repaired or replaced. In addition, valve accessories such as relief valve adapters and protective caps may become broken or lost, and dirt Trash, moisture, and other impurities can enter the valve. However, frequent inspections and replacements can extend the life of these parts. Valves may also be damaged through improper cylinder maintenance. For example, service personnel may fail to use proper brushes or applicators around cylinder openings when painting them, and as a result, gauge faces, weep holes in filler valves, 
and discharge openings of relief valves may be blocked with paint. In addition to inspecting the cylinder prior to filling or exchanging, it should be checked again after connecting, since leaks or equipment malfunctions may not be easily identified on empty containers that are not pressurized. And remember, whether inspecting, refilling, or exchanging forklift cylinders, be sure you are wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment required by your company policy. Filling Forklift Cylinders Removable DOT cylinders may be filled either by weight, using an accurate and approved scale, or by volume, using the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. Cylinders should never be filled by solely using the magnetic float gauge. Forklift cylinders must also be filled outdoors or in an approved filling area. The lift truck ignition should be off and the handbrake set. Filling cylinders on a truck requires certain safety measures. Not all jurisdictions allow filling on the truck. Check with your supervisor. If it is permitted, pull-away protection is required. In addition, a trained operator must be present during the entire filling process. Filling by weight. When filling forklift cylinders by weight, it's important to note that the steps involved may vary depending on your company policy and the type of equipment installed at the facility. Always consult your supervisor for more information. To fill a forklift cylinder by weight, make sure all cylinder valves are closed. Follow these steps to determine the total filled weight of a cylinder. Check the water capacity and tear weight stamped on the cylinder or its protective collar. Determine propane capacity by using the following formula. Water capacity times 0.42 equals propane capacity. Add the tear weight and propane capacity together to determine the total filled weight of the cylinder. Set the platform scale to the cylinder's total filled weight plus the weight of the hose and fitting. Place the cylinder on the scale. Select the proper hose end adapter to fit the cylinder valve. Connect to the cylinder. Start the pump. If through a service valve, open the hose end valve, then slowly open the cylinder service valve. When the target weight is reached, close the hose end valve. Shut off the pump if no other cylinders are filling. Make sure the service valve is closed. Loosen the connection and wait for any trapped liquid to bleed off. When trapped liquid is vented, disconnect the hose end fitting. Verify the filled weight as required by regulations. Use an approved method to check for leaks. Filling by volume. Before filling cylinders by volume, open and close the vent valve on the fixed maximum liquid level gauge to be sure vapor vents. If no vapor escapes, the valve may be blocked and must be reopened before the gauge will operate properly. Do not attempt to fill a cylinder by volume if the fixed maximum liquid level gauge is damaged or inoperable. Filling by volume follows a similar procedure with a few adjustments. Make sure all cylinder valves are closed. Select the proper hose end adapter to fit the filler valve or service valve. Remove the protective cap from the valve. Connect the cylinder. Open the vent valve on the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. If mist appears when the gauge is opened, stop. The cylinder is already full. Start the pump. Open the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. If through a filler valve, slowly open the hose end valve. When a white mist begins to escape from the fixed maximum liquid level gauge, immediately close the hose end valve. Close the vent valve on the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. Failure to shut off the propane promptly will result in an overfilled cylinder. An overfilled cylinder may discharge propane if the temperature rises, posing a risk of fire or personal injury to anyone nearby. Shut off the pump if no other cylinders are filling. Loosen the connection 
and wait for any trapped liquid to bleed off. When trapped liquid has vented, disconnect the hose end fitting. Reinstall appropriate valve caps and plugs. If the cylinder has a filler valve, reinstall the cap. Replace any caps and plugs that are missing. Position the cylinder securely using the locating pin on the truck and the hole in the cylinder collar. Secure the hold down straps properly. Reconnect the fuel line and check the cylinder and its valves for leaks with a non-corrosive leak detector solution. Inspecting the gaskets and o-rings in the filler valve and service valve connector for defects or leaks. After the cylinder is filled or at any time the dispensing station is unattended, shut off the pump, close valves at the storage tank and disconnect and store the hose to secure the dispenser against tampering. Cylinder Exchange Park the truck in a designated safe area and stop the engine. Close the cylinder valve and remove the quick disconnect coupling from the cylinder. Remove the empty cylinder from the cradle holding device and store it in a designated safe area. Select a filled cylinder and check it for damage or leaks. Also be sure to inspect the fuel lines and forklift connector couplings, especially the washers and o-rings, for damage or signs of aging. Be sure the cylinder valve is closed prior to connecting. Carefully install the filled cylinder in the cradle on the truck so the cylinder locator pin enters the locating hole in the cylinder collar. Reconnect the fuel lines to the cylinder liquid service valve and open the valve slowly. Securely mount the cylinder in its brackets and within the outline of the vehicle. In some instances, locating pins may be missing or broken off, allowing the cylinder to be mounted in any position. When this happens, the liquid withdrawal tube is exposed to the vapor space, which may give a false indication that the cylinder is empty. The pressure relief valve may also be immersed in liquid fuel, which would cause the cylinder to vent liquid in the event that it was activated. In the event that the locating pins for a cylinder are broken, take the forklift out of service. Check for leaks using a non-corrosive leak detector solution. If a leak is found, close the valve immediately and notify your supervisor or manager. If no leaks are found, start the engine and proceed with your work. Labeling DOT and OSHA require specific labeling for all cylinders. Cylinders used to transport propane must be clearly and durably marked with the proper shipping name and hazard class. If the original manufacturer's label is not present or clearly legible, apply a new warning label to the cylinder.